Well, hi, and welcome to my shop, and thanks so much for joining me here today. So I'm not alone with this radio, which is starting to get a little bit scary. And that, I think this is now day day six I'm starting with it, and the radio really is not working uh, well at all, and I really don't know why. So uh, I was thinking a bit about the strategy here just before I turned the camera on, and I think what I'm going to do is just continue with the capacitor replacement. Um, I, I still have this curious one. It, it's curious because it looks too new. This solder on the chassis looks looks new, but it may not be. I think I think this is a replacement. Um, it's a bypass capacitor for a cathode resistor right down there on the very first tube. So if this guy's bad, well, if it was shorted, that would be that would be a terrible thing. Uh, a pretty ugly one here but that's a fair ways into the radio now and the weakness is apparent before before this capacitor well I got these two really thoroughly ugly ones which are down kind of in the IF circuits again if they're causing problems it's it's coming later in the game then uh, the weaknesses I'm finding up here apparent apparent weaknesses I just have question marks about everything so, uh, in terms of order, um, I, th I think I should, I should get this guy out and test him for sure. In fact, we're going to do that right, right now. In case it's got a short in it. Um, you know, I'm, so I'm focused on capacitors here too. There could easily be an open resistor or something of that sort going on up in here. And it'll be a little while before we can track that down though. Got to get rid of these capacitors first. So, this guy. So, let's, let's start right in here. Uh, cut him out. Chances are this one's in good shape because it looks it looks nice. Well, I don't know about nice. Made in Canada 0 0.05. Okay, step this way. And I did take some other capacitors out I was gonna test and I haven't tested them, I probably won't because because I'm sure they're bad. It's a rainy, gray day outside today. It's supposed to be the same tomorrow again, too. Cool. Fall has come. Fall has arrived. Okay, so we're going to put 50 volts onto this capacitor. I'm watching the eye. Oh, it's not closing it at all. So this is a bad guy. This, this guy's bad, 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 bad. Look good. It was bad. Well, he didn't really look good. Look better than the rest, but terrible shape. 0.05. So that's the first one we will change out. Could could this one be silencing this radio? Well, maybe. Uh, I doubt it, but maybe. <laughs> I think I'll stick with the maybe story from now on. Okay, I'll put a 0.05 in there. Okay, so looking in the little image here, uh, I've cut away the, the uh, capacitor, and it, there's the uh, bypass resistor there I'm sorry the cathode resistor bypass capacitor cathode resistor and when I measure its resistance with this very annoying auto ranging meter I get 477 and on the schematic if you look here it sure looks like 330 to me um, let's see body and dot so body on um, this guy is orange so that's three so it's 330 but it's actually coming in at 500, so that's a little high. I think I'm going to replace that resistor too. We'll, we'll put in the 330 that's really supposed to be there. Uh, leave a nice tail here. Uh, now, would this silence the radio? No, no, there's no way this can silence the radio. Oops, I bumped the camera or something. What are you looking way up there for? Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and re replace that uh, that resistor. This is this is the last capacitor that's kind of right up in the early part of the radio. Um, it's kind of the, the 
the last likely bad actor here. The last, the last most likely bad actor. But I'd be very surprised if that. But I've been surprised before. Hey, let's be surprised now. Dead on all, like low on all bands too. Okay, I'm gonna get my signal tracer going again. And we'll warm up the radio here. Um, have a signal injection, the whole thing here. I'm missing, I'm missing everything. Everything's missing. Let's get it going. equipment. Oh, my frequency counter. The poor guy. <laughs> he's, he's going downhill. He's going to end up on the bench himself. Okay, now we can switch this guy on. Volume down just in case. Action. Okay. Dim bulbs reacted normally. So we want to be checking for RF. We're going to trace the output of the signal generator through the radio and compare it. Just see if anything's changing. Hey, why don't we just play the radio first, Jim? Just play the radio. Play the radio. Well, much what band are we on? We're not on the broadcast band. Let's get on that. Yeah, last I was testing was shortwave band. Okay, so this is broadcast band. Wow, this thing's really silent. 96 volts, so it's. Hmm. Yeah, I don't think doing that capacitor fixed very much at all. Okay, now i got to reset the uh, signal generator here. This isn't going to help me too much. We want to go down to around 1 million. If I can read it down here. Okay, so that's, that's about 1 million, I believe. The signals, this thing's wide open down here. It's, it's it's blasting away into this radio. Am I, am I starting even further back from? Oh my gosh, this is even worse than. There it is. It's doing the same thing. Where when I tune it in, the the. Uh, Signal strength seems to jump as if an EVC action is occurring. Maybe it is. Okay, now we'll listen to the signal. We're on RF band B, right up around a million. We'll find out with 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 this uh, signal tracer what frequency we're actually operating on. My frequency counter will kick in eventually. So I'm setting it so the eye will just close. Why is it jumping up and down there? What, anybody? Okay, good connection. Ah, this, this is it. Trouble shooting everywhere with everything, <laughs> including me. Okay, lots of wires running in front here of your view. So that's right out of the signal generator, just about closing the eye. 
other side of the capacitor and, and already lost a fair bit of signal just just crossing one little capacitor here okay we'll come over if I remember right do I remember right grid grid on the first tube so it sounds pretty similar to what's at the antenna but it is lower I can tell from the magic eye output uh, yesterday this was boosted a little bit, but I think I found the tuning was the issue here. Some, some more strange sounds coming out of something. Okay, tuning the radio. Yeah. That's maximum there. What about the other? What about the input? Could it be any different? It is. Wow. So if I wanted to tune, you can keep your eye on the keep your eye on the eye there. It's a lot of focus, but you can see it. You can hear it. That's tuned. That's the input to this tube and the output from this tube. And now I will change the tuning and watch. Oh man, so there's alignment issues in this radio. I'm pretty sure that's what this would prove. And I miss alignment so bad that the signal just can't get through the radio and that's really what's making it quiet. Nothing to do with all these capacitors. Only way to find out is perform an alignment and no reason to do that until all these capacitors are changed. So, so I think that's the message at this point is uh, finish the changing of the capacitors and then begin doing alignment work uh, on it. Yeah. So what have I got left? So I've got these these two guys here to get rid of. Ugly they are. Again, th this looks like a replacement. But it's old. Okay, power off. Away I go. I'll change these two out and we'll test the radio again. Okay, that's it for the rod. Uh, the rod, the remain, the last bit of rod is here. Let's test these out. See what we can find out about them. So, it's molded 0.05. Providence, Rhode Island. Okay, 50 volts. So you can't see it on the camera there, but it is opening ever so slightly. But, uh, yeah, what, what am I expecting? I'm expecting exactly what I'm finding. Look at now, this one, this one spewed its guts into the radio. That's a lot of wax that's come out of it. If it was running hot, would this get hot in some way? Never really encountered a capacitor that was hot on its own. Not that there haven't been some, I just haven't haven't really come across one. 50 volts, what do you do? Wow, okay, so that's 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 among the that's like the worst <laughs> reading. Why don't we check this guy with an ohmmeter? with nice fresh batteries. Now I don't normally check capacitors with oops, no meters. Get it on. So there's no short in here at all. I don't know if that even means anything. I'm at a 200 mega ohm scale. You practically measure the resistance of the air. Like that. Not shorted. That's the bottom line. Okay, let's go back to the radio because it has another chance. 
to to uh, to operate. Now I think you know, other than these two, way down in the audio area, and this part, these two, this one in particular, also in the in in the audio portion of the radio. I don't think these can. Uh, You know, I think the signal is supposed to pass. I gotta look at the schematic for this. Maybe, maybe this is a bigger problem than I realize. Or maybe not. I don't know. Okay, here we go. Volume down. Power on. Goodness knows, changing these capacitors in every case is having some incremental improvement effect on the radio. Maybe maybe so tiny we could never notice it without a really careful measurement. At the same time, if if the radio's been aligned with a bunch of bad capacitors and then you change all the capacitors, there's a chance the alignment is out because because it was aligned with bad capacitors. Generally my experience is changing all these capacitors doesn't directly affect the alignment. Oh don't quote me on that. Yeah, quote me. But make sure you let people know it's me. <laughs> yeah. Okay, well, the radios should be warmed up. We're we not hearing anything. Here we go. Oh, I hear it. Strange fellow. So with this being the output, it, it's pretty safe to say you know, nothing has changed. Why don't we just take a look at the audio signal level right here in the tone control. Just, I'm just curious. Give me a moment, I'm going to flip my machine over to audio. What do we hear? See what I'm doing is I'm working the volume control on the uh, over here. Let's try it again. Well, again, I need to look at the schematic to sort this out. Let's just check the volume control here too. Input to the line control. Oh, there's lots there. Okay, then hang on. That's nice. That sounds nice. Okay, output from the volume control. You hear that strange effect on it's turning it up full. Let me go back to the input side. something happening there too. And on the output. Oh you know what? We're we're hearing we're hearing the radio. <laughs> too many speakers going in here. So if we've got this kind of signal on the output here matching the input to the volume so that's the output of the volume control. That's heading out on a black wire. It's in this this bundle of wires here. Why would there be audio stuff? No, well, hold on. No, that's the wrong bundle. Well, I think it's. 
So, so these are some of the uh, wires that operate the lights on the front panel. As you're switching through them, and in that mess somewhere is another wire. Um, pretty much impossible to see. Well, I can't, I can't really follow it back. Schematic. I'll leave that running. Let's take a look at the schematic here. So where, where are we fooling around now? We uh, are just fooling around with the tone control and the volume control. Tone control. So here's the uh, tone controls. Let's think hard about what this one does. I think it says, it says bass control right on it. Bass tone control. So basically you are bypassing this capacitor with this slider. If you slide this all the way here, you've essentially done away with this capacitor. So you're forcing the signal through less capacitance. Less capacitance means less lobes. Now wait a minute, that's not quite right got two in series here and you're eliminating one of them. So as you move this control this way and eliminate one because these are in series you end up with more come on. Okay so I'm going to stop trying to figure out this <laughs> stupidly simple thing here because it's embarrassing me. Let's go down here. Um, so the control that I've been working here So you just heard me work the other tone control. Uh, so the other tone control. Now I proved that out to be wired the way it's shown and I changed the capacitor for it. So conceivably this is working perfectly fine. Oddly enough when I turn it down the sound just disappears. I'm sure I changed that, 0 0.07, 0 0.007. Um, so are, are, are these two capacitors the same? No, they aren't. This isn't, this just doesn't match. Let's, let's focus on that, making this match a bit. There, I forgot the image was up on the screen. So what we really want to look at here Tone control with these two capacitors. So the shielded wire, let's start with the shielded wire comes into this area. What happens next? Okay, so I'm looking at the uh, the shielded wire. The only shielded wire is this one. Wait a minute, there's no shielded wire showing here. They're all over here. Well, where did that shielded wire come from? Um, so this shielded wire is this is soldered solidly there. It's got to be going over here. But it looks to me like this capacitor has been added in. It just this just doesn't look right. This certainly isn't right. So what if I just take these two capacitors out and hook these wires up direct? What what was somebody trying to do here? They look at the schematic and we'll look at those two capacitors. Let's see, what are they in size? One is a 0.01 and the other is a, you know, it looks like an 870 or 570 or 370 or something. Well, that could, that, that could be these two. Somebody went and created what they see on the schematic. So if they did that, you'd expect two capacitors off of one terminal. The two capacitors are off of the two terminals. So you, so you expect one outside leg of this control to be connected between the two capacitors, but it's not. It's, it's not done that way at all. What is going on here? Okay, so I'm just going to leave those questions. Jim, don't forget, the 120 volts is right there waiting for your finger to touch it.
careful here. Because so this one up here, up here. A little unusual, it would just kill the sound entirely. So this is connected just as a variable resistor onto this wire, and I trace this wire all the way over to this terminal. I don't know if you can see where I'm pointing here. Having a little trouble uh, monitoring what's on the uh, screen right now. And then I replace this capacitor up to here to a grounding point. No, that's to a terminal. That's to a terminal on that tube. That's okay. Yeah, schematic on the... I do know which control is which because it's written on the cabinet, at least positionally. The on-off control is on the back of the tone control. Can you show that? Power switch on rear of tone control. Yeah, they sure do show it right on the tone control. On which tone control? Rear of which tone control? Oh, you, 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 you. So we almost, we almost got a strong hint there. <laughs> Treble tone control, base tone control, R15, R23, R15, R23, R15, R23, no. Okay, so we're not getting the hint that way. So this is this is basically what's there for what I believe is the trouble control. Why why the floppy wire? The other one goes right to ground. That's fine. This is fine. Except except for that. So going back to this tone control. So this tone control has has three terminals. Only two of them are being used. Now is that that's the way it is. Well, the way they show it on the schematic is not done that way. Jeepers! How am I going to prove all this out? There's a shielded wire that doesn't show. Oh my! What am I missing? Am I missing something here? They took the time to put the shielded wires on the schematic. Well, if I were a shielded wire, where would I want to go? <laughs> if I were this shielded wire, where would I want to go? I would want to go right on this terminal or this terminal. Only three terminals on here have ever been soldered. There's quite a solder splash right here on the chassis. That's a replaced tone control. Maybe these two are replacements. And when they're in the process of re replacing it, they got messed up. I looked at the schematic, misinterpreted it. I'm not having a hard enough time with it. So the, the, the tone controls are superfluous. They can be removed from the circuit, if I'm lucky. So the trouble would be easy. I just break the connection for anywhere. I could just break break this wire here. And that would take that out of the circuit, but why, why bother? If I just crank this up, there's a big resistor there now. So it's, to some degree, this is out of the circuit. So this one, um, depending upon where these wires are coming from. Okay, so let, let's see, where's this wire going? Oh yeah, right. I need a little bit of blasting light in there. Let me, let me switch to the... Uh, I lay around here. I'll switch to the uh, bigger bigger view here. Bear with me. Okay. It's 
it's on, Jim. Don't forget. Uh, what I did forget was what the heck am I going to do here? Tracing the wire. We're tracing the wire. Oh boy. It appears to go. Pretty sure. Give me something to point with here. Pretty sure it's this wire. Right here. And this wire comes up. Wait a minute. What I just traced. This comes to here. I just. That's right. I'm tracing the wrong wire. I traced this wire. This wire. This wire. This wire. Oh my gosh, it comes all the way around to here. Okay, so we now know where it's going. So this is... This is pin number 8. Yeah, this guy connected pin number 8. Pin number 8, eh? Pin number eight on the uh, get, get this right now, Jim. Uh, on the detector tube. Pin number eight here. Oh, for crying out loud! Pin number eight. I gotta look in the book. So that's a six S. I'm losing my mind here. Six SQ seven. 6SQ7, that's right. I can feel my brain starting to brim here. So 6SQ7, we found it on pin number 8. Pin number 8 is ta -ta -ta -ta, a heater. Okay, let's try that again. <laughs> a heater. Uh, that doesn't sound too good to me. I had to come all the way around to here to get to a heater. That doesn't make any sense. So there's the key. That's pin 8. Is that wire really on there? Is it? It's definitely on there. Is this really the right wire? Okay, it's this one here. Wrong wire. This wire. This wire. This wire. This wire, I can't see where it's going. It's just disappearing out of view here. It'll make me do backflips in my shop. that so that is now one of the output tubes and that I can't see I can't see I can't see that okay we're down to this because of this boy it just Is it really soldered there? I don't think it is. It's just stuck under wires here. This sets the line, Jim. Don't forget. You know, I don't think it's there. This is, this is the right wire. I don't think it goes there. Definitely, definitely doesn't go there. It goes up here. And where? It's just
point here. See if that wire goes there by uh, doing an ohm meter reading. It's just just so hard to see in there. So we'll go from here. Stay on there too. I thought it was this terminal. Well, it puts a zero on the meter. Okay, so that's the terminal it goes to on the detector, and now that is I'm trying to feel the key. Here's the key. One, two, three, four, five, six. Six. Isn't six? Six. What is six? Six on the SK. SQ. Six on the SQ. Six. Pin six. Plate. Plate. Okay. So plate. Plate coming basically from the plate of the detector tube triode. From the plate of the detector tube triode. Eight of the detector tube triode. So we have a, a long wire coming from here. This shows a wire going to, or, or, or a resistor in the circuit, and then this shows the capacitor for the tone control, the treble tone control. Treble tone control. It's not wired that way. So, see, like, see, see how the, this is grounded back here? But it's not wired that way. What they've done is they've wired this as a series resistor. So, essentially, this connection is missing right here. So instead of having a one meg load on here all the time on this capacitor, it's going way up and down. Is that right? No, one, one meg all the time? No, no. When you move this control up here, it goes to zero. And you could do the same thing with the way this control is wired now. You could dial it up to zero. But when you dial it the other way, you're, you're, you're basically, I don't know, does that really make any difference how you wire this? It's not done the right way though. Uh, now the other one, Basically, as a capacitor over to this terminal, which should, which should, which should find this. It's like if I trace one of these these wires, one one goes to, one goes straight to a tube terminal, and the other one goes straight to here. Where is here? I gotta find here. It is here even there? <laughs> Does this even exist on the radio? I have to find this. This is a, this is difficult because it's it's far away from terminals uh, and, and I, I can't even tell for sure what this this must be the grid connection here so grid connection and then, and then this this control is also wired as a variable resistor it's just not done the same at all Well, I should just take my time and restore these two circuits to exactly what they're supposed to be. Try anyway. I think the key is finding this. So, so hey, look, I, I know where this is, and this is connected to the this. I should find that right there. 
right there. Right on the terminal. Come on, this capacitor is coming right off this terminal. I should be able to find it. Okay, and then go look for it now. I said that capacitor is coming right off this terminal. What what terminal was that? <laughs> coming right off the plate terminal. The, the, the same one I've been working on. The same one I've been working on. The same one I've been working on. Right off of this terminal here. Um, yeah, you know, I'm, my mind's getting saturated here. I'm having trouble uh, thinking this thing through. So I wanted to find, let's find out where this wire goes here. Uh, who cares what I was going to do? Right in here. Tucked right in. Up to this area here. And then from there, oh my gosh, another, it's just a schmozzle of wires in here. A schmozzle. I think. So the end of the, end of the braid is, the end of the spring stuff's right here. I think I think this is the wire coming out of it right here, and that wire is doubling back onto this terminal. Is that right? Is that is that it? Is that the terminal? Could that be the one? from here. I got a zero. So it's coming here, it's coming to one of the two output tubes. And that would be pin number one, two, three, four, pin five, pin five on a six F six. Pin five on a six F six. Let this drive you nuts. You just have to take it slow, one step at a time. There's only basically one way these radios work, and there's about a million ways they don't work. So we're hunting in a a big haystack here. Six. Six doesn't appear. Six is not a pin that's used. Six is a handy terminal for confusing troubleshooters like me. So that's that's an exercise in frustration. So all kinds of stuff hooked up to pin six here. Just all kinds of stuff. Oh boy. So the other end of this wire goes to this pin where it encounters a capacitor here, capacitor here. So there's the two capacitors. There they are. There they are. A small ceramic and a, uh, a small non-ceramic. And then in the middle, this this is this is this is this is taking the signal over here. This is this is this is baloney. This is a bunch of baloney here. But in changing it, the person would have. Oh, that's right. He changed this control. Okay, so maybe he's like me. <laughs> he uh, he changed the control and then couldn't remember how things were done. It's back in the day before. The schematics were handy, you didn't take any photographs because you'd have to take them down to the drugstore to get them to produce their buck a shot. Who's going to take photographs? That's crazy. Sketches. People make sketches. You must have made a lousy sketch. So my move here is just to change this all around until it matches the schematic. And we know this is the wire. No, no, we know this is the wire coming. Let's, hey, wait a minute, let's check the schematic on this. This is the wire coming uh, coming to the control. Why would you have one shielded wire but going away it's not shielded? Why, why would that be? Because you, you have a wire 
coming all the way to the control, shielded, and then a wire leaving it, non-shielded. Um, because saying it's going away from there is not right. So I think I found these two, and I found a wire, shielded wire here, coming all the way to here. And what happens next is this terminal is not connected. This comes off on a wire that goes all the way to, the, to, to, to this tube. To what looks like the grid of one of the output tubes. Um, and that would make sense because it's the audio output from here. You certainly need these capacitors to block the DC here. Oh boy. I think I'm going to stop and just take a little break here, clear my head, and then I'm going to look at this again, and then I'm going to decide what to do. Okay, let's just have a little moment here together, just watching TV, and on comes an advertisement for a drug called Prevagen. You've probably heard of it. It's advertised quite regularly. I watch, and this nice couple comes out and says they've been taking this drug for 10 years, and as far as they're concerned, it's still working for them. And my antenna started wiggling. Wait a minute, that's an anecdotal piece of information. It's meaningless in a scientific way. Why is a drug being marketed with anecdotal information from one or two patients. Well, maybe this is the reason. I just jumped on the internet and I'm going to read this to you. According to the Federal Trade Commission, which charged Quincy Bioscience with false and deceptive advertising last January, I don't know what that means last January, the company's study found that Prevagen was no more effective than a placebo at improving any of the nine cognitive skills, including memory that the company measured. So that's why in this advertisement they don't put on a proper scientific study because the study shows their drug is no good. Yet there they are marketing and there are two people on the screen telling us to buy that drug because it worked for them. Oh my god. That's just that's just terrible. But you know, that kind of advertising is illegal in Canada. You can't you can't advertise uh, drugs in Canada used to be that way in the States until I think the 1990 or somewhere around there where the laws were changed and all of a sudden American television was full of uh, drugs being uh, pushed. Pushed is the word for it. Pushed. In fact, hey, let me keep going. I'm going to harp on this one step farther. Why in those drug ads, they come on with this drug It's and they tell you a little bit about the study and then they tell you, tell you a little bit about the drug and then they tell you a little bit about its problems and then they tell you go talk to your doctor because you're being trained to be a salesman in those advertisements. They're turning you into a salesman and you are going to go in and pitch that drug to your doctor. They're turning everybody into salesmen. You know, in Canada, the attitude is, this is the doctor's business. The doctors are the ones who need to know about these drugs, not us. It's up to the doctors to understand it and other organizations that work on this kind of stuff. We're not involved. In deciding which drugs are good for us. That's up to a doctor for crying out loud. Okay, that's enough of a rant. I'm gonna go watch some more TV now. Okay, rant extension. I just, uh, I just, just realized there's another uh, thing that goes on all the time with this way drug companies show statistics. And they'll say, hey, see this guy had a heart attack, but then he took this drug, and you know, 98% of people who take this drug do not have a second heart attack. And what they don't tell you is that 97% of people who don't take the drug also don't have another heart attack. The actual improvement is only 1%. The 1% is nothing. Yet, they market it as if 98%. So take this drug and you'll be in the 98% group. But don't take the drug, you'll be in the 97% group. But this goes on all the time with how drugs are marketed. Terrible, terrible, terrible abuse of statistics. Oh my gosh. Okay, that's enough ranting. Okay, so I'm pretty sure I've restored this to the proper way it should be. And I think I even got the tone control direction correct. So let's check out this capacitor. 
this is the one that we could hear it on one side and not on the other, which which may implicate the capacitor. It's happening here. Tangled up. Okay, hold on. I gotta go up to the sky here to get untangled. Okay, back down. Hey, where's my test leads? Here they are. I'm also assuming if those two controls, the two tone controls have been replaced, that they are replaced with the correct size of tone control. Okay, 50 volts, and what do you do? It opened a little bit. It was pretty quick. That's pretty quick. That suggests very small capacitance. What is the capacitor here? 0.01. I don't know. I don't know what to think of that. I think that was suggesting there's no capacitance in there. along with no leak, along with a leak. Okay, so we have this done. I did not alter this one. I, I guess we'll play the set. I mean, uh, why not give it a shot? Okay, no answer comes in reply, so we'll fire it up here. All is normal. is getting a little messy. That's not good. I'm not hearing anything so far. And the volume was up. That's disappointing. So we're still shooting a thousand hertz at the uh, radio. Kind of read it there on my counter 1,000, 1 million, a million, a million hertz, a million hertz, a million hertz, yes, a million hertz. <laughs> and it does hurt. So maybe it's not tuned in. I got the antenna connected. Well, we really did it this time. Okay, let's, you know, these, this, this guy can quiet the radio, discovered. Not really messed up. I've tuned the radio. <laughs> Some of those squeaks sound like... Okay, we'll turn this... This is one way, all the way. Sound of the gun. And one way, all the other way. Yeah, fixed it. Let's see what's happening here. Now I know why the guy put those capacitors in there to make the radio work. Uh, we'll start... Let's see, I'm on audio here. Let's go back to, um, no, let's hold it on auto where audio where it is. What do we hear down here? Hand upon the volume control. Not much. may not be tuned. So if we go to the top of the volume control, I think we hear goodness. Tune. Wow, okay, so it would appear to be lots of signal now on the volume control. Look 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 at the alignment. Watch my hand tune and just listen to how many peaks there are. <laughs> That's bad. That's plenty bad. I mean, those are those aren't just a little of alignment. Those are in two different lanes. That would that would drag the radio down. Now let's just let's, let's get it going here. Now the output. It's all there. Ah, uh, we're getting somewhere. So from here. Here the signal goes to the grid of the 
detector triode. Which I probably tracked it down once before, but I've forgotten. So, forward to the book. Grid of a 6SQ7. Grid of a 6SQ7. 2. 2 is the grid. 222 two, two is the grid. Of the detector. 1, 2, 3, 4. Detector. Oh, I shouldn't have counted. 2. 2. <laughs> two. 2. 1, 2. This is the grid. So what are we here? Volume down. We, uh, well, that big pop indicates a voltage sitting on the grid. That, that That's a message. So we hear it. Wait a minute, what am I hearing it out of? No, it's got to be out of the signal tracer, right? Well, this is dramatic. That much signal? And we can't hear anything coming out of the speaker or the radio. So, so that's basically audio output of the detector. It did it at the detector being fed through the volume control and back to the detector tube triode. And on the grid, we're getting a nice strong signal. So, hey, what's happening on the plate of the 6SQ7? What is happening on the plate of the 6SQ7? The plate is 6. The 6. The 6. Give me a stick. Getting a little excited here. One, two, three, four. Okay, that's the key. One, two, three, four, five. That is six. That capacitor's got six on it. This is the output. Let's just get my hand on the volume control here. Where is it? Input. Output. So, wow, wow, okay, that's that's a little dramatic. Let me just double check that now. Because we found something here. 6SQ7, just make absolutely sure. Grid is 2, plate is 6. There's the two diodes. Grid is 2, plate is 6. Grid is 2. So I'm, I, I can see the key. Oh, I can see the key. Feel the key. Count. One, two. Grid. Three, four, five, six. Plate. Well, there's a problem there. What's the problem? Plate voltage. Let's check plate voltage. Plate voltage. Plate voltage. Hey, let's, let's, use, let's use this meter. Let's use this one over here. Indicating meter is always better to use. I'm just going to change the lighting here a little bit. Actually, actually, I'm changing it a lot. There. So this is the meter we're going to use here. Not with that. Use it with uh, this guy here. Oh, we don't have the ground on. Okay, putting on my ground for the meter. Yeah, I'm a scaredy cat. Okay, voltage on the plate, we're at 500 volts, so 250 straight up on the meter. And the plate was six and this is the plate not a voltage there how do we know for sure this is worth checking on the on here so that's the B plus with some uh, uh, dim bulb restriction this is a little higher over here I think this one here no oh it's way down Look how low that is that's low uh, so why no voltage there? That's a good question. That is the question. Why no voltage on the plate of the detector tube? 
So I see a resistor. We'll look on the other side of the resistor. On the other side of the resistor, which I can see is definitely connected here. And there's some voltage there. So this is one side of the resistor, to other side. Open, open plate resistor. One side, to other side, for sure. Push on it, cover your rears. Wow, it's really tucked under there, but I think I can get at it. Plate resistor, let's kill the power now. Plate resistor. Uh, hey, schematic. So we're talking about a plate resistor of the detector tube. So we're talking about probably this one right here. And can we read the res R14? Looks like 220,000. So that would be a red, red, yellow. So I look at this resistor. I know it's hard for you to see it now on the camera. I can see it's red, body end dot. Red, red, yellow. That's what it is. Okay, so we're going to go in and cut that guy out of there. This could be it. This could be it. Let me switch cameras here. It's pretty much ready to stop for the day, but wow, right on the edge here. So, power's off. Cutter's in. I have to adjust the light to benefit myself. Nip this one out. You know what? I'm going to get the clip lead ready because I know what's going to happen. It's actually frightening. When you're working on a radio like this, you cut a part out, you look away, when you look back, it's frightening. <laughs> you know, it should be pretty hard to get these messed up. But I, I have certain skills when it comes to that. Now, the other end of the resistor. I think I see it there. Cutting the right thing, and only one thing. Okay, get him out of there. He's making a run for it. There it is. So body and dot with a silver band. So red body and is also red. That's the funny, funny thing about these kinds of resistors. If, if the same color occurs twice, you can't really tell. So red, red, yellow. That's it. 220k. Okay, and uh, kind of a regular size resistor. It's, you know, I'm gonna put in a, a one water, I think. 220. What have I got? Around one watt at 220. I got some uh, 220. Ooh, what have I got? I got lots of stuff in here. These are all 2.2. Okay. Here's one. No, that's a K. I need a yellow. I thought I was grabbing a yellow one there. Oh, it's the gold band. I have many, many, many 33K resistors in here. Uh, what's that doing? That's not supposed to be in this bucket. Let's get them out. Yeah, just make a run for it there. So what I do is I have all the 22s in here. See, it's just 22. And then I just look for the third band, the yellow. And so it's easy to sort through many, many resistors quickly. And of course, the one I want is not in here. Well, instead of 220, K, okay. How about we try 200K? I don't think. So 
I'm going to find them in here. Anyway, that's going to be yellow, yellow band, yellow band. Third band is almost invisible on this. What is it? 200K. Yellow band's hard to see. It's there. It's just really, really hard to see. Okay. There we are. 200's a lot better than... Oh, I didn't test that resistor once I got it out. Okay, let's verify the de defective resistor here. Kind of leads. to say 220k I'll be disappointed it's open you know, 200 million it's open okay I don't think there's any doubt of that how about our replacement resistor why don't we just check it 220k. No, 200. This is 200, supposedly. 0.2 megaohms. 200k with a little extra on the end there. Perfect. Now, I was really good at putting the clip lead on one end, but of course I didn't clip it on the other end, so. Now it helps us now. It goes here. It goes right there. I really didn't mean to call on a deity's aid here while I'm in the shop. I think I'm really kind of on my own here. Normally I, I would uh, deal with resistors after doing all the capacitors and doing voltage tests to try to find bad resistors. And that's kind of what's happened here, isn't it? It's kind of what's happened. How did this radio work at all? Because uh, maybe bad capacitors failing to stop the progression of signals in the radio that don't want to progress and bad capacitors letting a signal somehow get to the speaker through uh, some alternative path in the radio. Does that make any sense? Like traveling on the ABC line or, or something like that. I don't know if I'm really making a lot of sense with that, but somehow turning... And you could even have uh, inductive connections between parts of the radio because wires are passing each other and under normal operation the uh, those uh, connections are so weak it has to be immaterial in the operation of the radio but when the radio is not operating right you turn the volume rate up and things like that suddenly these other signal paths start becoming uh, significant Again, making all this up just making it up Okay, hey, now there's a real good chance that this radio is actually going to spring to life now. Spring forth with life. Speak again after being quiet for so many years. Who knows how many years this radio has been absolutely idle. We don't know. 
Okay, I'm sounding really hopeful, and I shouldn't, I shouldn't, I shouldn't do that. I should, say, I should just say, let's just take this test. What was that? Why did that pop? Touch the, touch the solder here. Get the instruments out of the way. Get the solder out of here. Solder, very dangerous stuff laying around on your bench. Okay, let's give it a go. Uh, things are different this time, so dim bulbs are quite important. Volume down, because we know it's going to be a blaster. It's going to it's going to speak speak with fortitude. Dim bulbs behaving normally. Tone control kind of in the middle. Some are some are not right at the end. Volume down. Band is broadcast. Radio is tuned to a million with a signal coming in the antenna. Come on, baby. Surprise us all. I got a little more volume out of it. But not much. It's coming. That's got to rank us better. Uh, B plus voltage measurement. Let's see what happened on that tube now. Or was I just kidding myself? So we had one side, we had a big voltage. It's not so big. Other side, we now have a lesser voltage. Let me let me put this radio on to full power because we're at 95 volts. That's that's getting low. There we go. A lot more volume. Hey. That's pretty normal, because I don't know how strong the signal is. Uh, actually, I'm beating this radio up with a whopper of a signal. There's that weird thing. Yeah, maybe this volume, maybe the volume control is wired wrong too. Let's try picking something up. Joy of joy. We're at the point where we think it might even work. Uh, let me take off the uh, signal generator. Go over there. Turn it down so it's not interfering. Where's my antenna wire? Here it is. Okay, I'm gonna put the antenna on. Oh, I think I have the switch off down here. Let's try what happens here. Ground? Antenna. Did I turn the volume down? Come on, come on, radio. Give me something out of that. Hmm. What's the action with this? I need to go and make sure that the antenna is switched on. I think it's not. I'll leave it on this noise, whatever that is. I'm going to go and check a switch. I'm out of the room, so I don't know if it suddenly got louder. It's, it's, hey, it's a radio. I made it. Now I gotta make it a radio that works well. Tone? Hey. Tone? Ooh. Not so good. So this is at maximum resistance in here right now. So we'll leave that like it is. Volume? That's full volume. It's nothing too dramatic. Let's just skip to the other side of this capacitor here. Flip 
makes a huge difference. This capacitor is there. Okay, well now what can we pick up? Oh good, I'm hearing all the familiar sounds. Okay, so on the dial, we're way at the wrong end. We're at the high end. We really want to, we want to be down around 700, 600. That's, that's where the stations are. Let's go down there. So. Okay, for the first time, radio. Where'd he go? Come on. That's full volume now. it by shaking the tuning <laughs> I just did this. We'll do it again, Jim. Well, I don't know exactly what happened there. There it is! Okay, finally, over the hump. That's great. Okay, from here on in, it's basically all downhill from here, and that's a good downhill. Like a, like a toboggan downhill, kind of thing. Fantastic. So, thanks a lot for watching this, and uh, we'll just keep carrying on with this radio tomorrow. <laughs>